Hello, this is Dr. Andrew Doan, and today I'm going to show you the body voltage that's being induced on my body when I stand next to different electrical sources in the home. Specifically, I'm looking at extremely low frequency EMF that is oscillating at 50 to 60 hertz per second. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the potential health problems and what you can do. So let's get started. To measure my body voltage, I use the Inologic Auto Ranging Voltmeter. I place a link in the description for the voltmeter and the earthing products that I am using. I plug the red positive lead into the slot on the voltmeter for measuring voltage and resistance. I plug the black negative lead into the common slot on the voltmeter for the ground. I turn on the voltmeter and turn the dial to millivolts alternating current or AC. AC current and voltage are denoted as a tilde squiggly symbol. I use a standard earthing grounding cable for my ground. I confirm that my electrical outlet is properly grounded with a standard ground checker. Two orange lights mean that the outlet is grounded. I connect the earthing grounding cable into the outlet ground. Placing the black negative probe of the voltmeter on the metal contact on the earthing cable nipple and pitching the red positive lead of the voltmeter with my left hand, the induced body voltage is as much as 293 millivolts alternating current when standing in this location of my house. My earthing product is the earthing cable with an EKG earthing patch that's plugged into a second outlet that's grounded nearby. My ungrounded body voltage was 268 volts alternating current. When I ground my body with the earthing cable and EKG patch, my grounded body voltage drops to 15 millivolts AC. Here I'm using the EMF smart sensor to measure the EMF in microtesla. My home is fairly clean and my tester is not sensitive enough to detect the ambient EMF. I'm going to heat up a cup of coffee in this microwave. Let's see what happens. At a couple feet away, the microwave increased the EMF from near zero to 0.91 microteslas. Next to the microwave, the meter peaked at 3.43 microteslas. Let's see what happens when I put my body next to this. At a foot away, turning on the microwave doesn't increase my body voltage any higher when compared to the microwave being off. The shielding on the microwave prevents any induced AC voltage on my body. Let's see what happens when I stand next to the power meter where the electrical service enters my home. In this setup, my voltmeter is grounded using an alligator clips, earthing cable, and a grounding stake. My earthing device is an earthing cable connected to a grounded electrical socket and connected to an EKG earthing patch. Sitting near the power meter, the voltmeter is showing readings around 35 millivolts AC. The EMF readings show 1.08 microteslas next to the power meter. My body voltage is around 277 millivolts AC at about a foot away from the power meter. On the meter, I switch to volts AC instead of millivolts AC. As I get closer, my body voltage increases to as high as 943 millivolts alternating current. With the grounding device, my body voltage drops to 43 millivolts AC. Let's compare grounding via the earthing cable with being barefoot. Barefoot on the grass drop my body voltage to 10 millivolts AC. I want to mention that when grounded, my body is not acting like an antenna and I feel no electrical current through my finger or foot. Even if there is current being drawn through my body to the ground, the current is minimal and not harmful. What's more harmful is having AC voltage oscillating through the body. I'll explain later. Let's move back seven feet from the power meter. At seven feet away, the induced body voltage is 77 millivolts AC. As I walk closer to the power meter, the voltage increases to 85, 93, 144, 165, 338 millivolts alternating current. The closer my body gets to extremely low frequency EMFs, the higher the induced alternating currents and voltages will be on my body. Let's see what happens when I get about 50 feet away from the house. Even though there are EMFs present, my EMF meter is not sensitive enough to detect any EMFs at this point. 
my body voltage is low away from my house and it's mainly in the teens alternating current voltage. Let's see what happens when I am near a small generator. The generator emits a 83 microteslas EMF. This increased my body's voltage in the teens to 84 millivolts alternating current. As I approach closer to the generator, my body voltage alternating current was as high as 114 millivolts AC. Let's see what happens when I ground with a polyester non-conductive sock on my foot. My body voltage drops from 80 millivolts AC to 43 millivolts AC. Barefoot, I drop to four millivolts AC, even next to the generator. I can sit on the generator and still see a body voltage of six millivolts AC when grounded barefoot. I have induced as much as 12,000 millivolts or 12 volts AC onto my body. What does this all mean? Is body voltage a neat party trick? Is grounding and earthing a fad based on pseudoscience? I am a physician with multiple areas of expertise. I have a master's in public health degree and I look at environmental sources of pollution, toxins, and radiation with a perspective that focuses on the health of the community. I am an aerospace medicine physician with a PhD in neuroscience who understands voltage-gated ion channels, extremely low frequency EMFs effect voltage-gated ion channels. It's well established that we have throughout our bodies sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium channels that are controlled by electrical voltage. Even in the nervous system, electrical conductance is not achieved by electrical currents moving down the nerve cell like electrical currents that move in a copper wire. Electrical conductance down a nerve cell and axon is initiated and propagated down the nerve cell by voltage-gated ion channels. The resting state of cells is about negative 70 millivolts. Many of these ion channels open between negative 40 to negative 20 millivolts or higher. Therefore, any foreign electrical alternating currents, such as the positive voltage induced on the body by electrical fields that oscillate at 50 to 60 cycles per second, will open random ion channels in the brain, in your organs, your muscles, and throughout the body. What happens when positive voltage is oscillating at 50 to 60 cycles per second in your brain, organs, muscles, and body? Let's consider the known voltage-gated ion channels, voltage-gated sodium channels. These typically open at membrane potentials around negative 55 to negative 40 millivolts and are crucial for nerve conductance in the brain, heart, and throughout the body. Voltage-gated potassium channels. There are several types of potassium channels with different activation ranges. Some open at slightly polarized voltages around negative 40 millivolts, while others involved in returning the membrane potential back to the resting state may activate at around positive 30 millivolts and higher. They are crucial for nerve conductance in the brain, heart, and throughout the body. Voltage-gated calcium channels. These channels can activate at membrane potentials of approximately negative 40 millivolts to negative 20 millivolts. They are important in neurons and muscle cells for initiating neurotransmitter release and muscle contraction respectfully. Voltage-gated chloride channels. These are less common and not as well understood, but they generally open at membrane potentials that are close to the chloride equilibrium potential, which can vary significantly depending on the cell type. When ungrounded in the presence of extremely low frequency EMF, I think we are causing a random whole body ion channel spasm. This has been shown in research on the potassium channel. Randomly activating these channels have both beneficial and adverse effects. However, even with beneficial effects, there's always an overdose associated with anything, even water. Too much water can cause harm and death, for example. Dr. Paracelsus in the 1500, the father of toxicology stated, all things are poison and nothing is without poison. Only the dose makes a thing not a poison. That means the exposure, how much you're being exposed to, the time, the length, intensity of the dosage will affect what that does in your body. So consider what can happen when extremely low frequency EMF induce an AC voltage on the body. All these systems in the body are dependent on voltage-gated ion channels. 
Voltage gated ion channels are located throughout the entire body in the membranes of many types of cells. These systems control our mood, thoughts, sleep, headaches, motility, pain, hormones, and all bodily functions. So number one, neurons. These channels are crucial for the initiation and propagation of action potentials in the nervous system. Two, muscle cells. In skeletal, cardiac, which is your heart, smooth muscle tissues, voltage-gated ion channels are essential for muscle contraction. Three, cardiac cells. These play a key role in the rhythmic beating of the heart by generating action potentials and pacemakers cells and in the propagation of the electrical signal throughout the myocardium. 4. Endocrine cells. Some hormone secreting cells use these channels to trigger the release of hormones in response to electrical signals. 5. Sensory receptors. Certain sensory cells such as those involved in taste, smell, and hearing have voltage gated ion channels that help translate sensory input into neural signals. 6. Pancreatic beta cells. These channels help regulate insulin secretion in response to changes in blood glucose levels. 7. Sperm cells. They have voltage gated ion channels that are thought to play a role in the acrosome reaction during fertilization. As a physician, I was able to resolve my personal seasonal allergies, eczema, insomnia, and even manage my bipolar disorder through sleeping grounded with the Earthing mattress cover. The Earthing Company is not a sponsor of this video. I did, however, place a link to the Earthing Company in the description below. Because we sleep and live in an ELF or extremely low frequency EMF environment associated with modern life, grounding with an earthing product is essential to mitigate the EMF pollution that's become an integral part of our lives. Earthing is the practice of having skin contact to the earth. While research shows that 30 minutes of skin contact to the earth is enough to perceive beneficial results, this is not enough. We sleep and we live indoors with EMF pollution that is inducing an AC voltage on our bodies. Therefore, we should be grounded, using an earthing product as much as possible. I recommend sleeping grounded with an earthing product. Sleeping grounded improves sleep and helps our bodies heal. Please share your successes with earthing and grounding in the comments. For additional health tips, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Until next time, I wish you health and joy.